Thank you. Yeah. What's up? Well, she wrote a list. Scan it. Give us the thing you care about most. Okay. So, I understand that sadness is sort of quite downstream. Right? What is? Sadness. Feeling. Oh, yeah. Henri, I think you say. Lots of resistance in there. Victimhood, regret. Yeah. And I understand that being angry about things or having the feeling of revenge is a bit upstream from that. Yeah, well, disempowerment is about as low as it gets in terms of allowing. And anger is a bit better. Revenge is even better because don't tell anyone we said that. <laughs> because in revenge, at least you're feeling that you're taking some of your power back, but it is an improved vibration. Yeah. And some of my interpersonal difficulties that I've been unpacking over the recent years, I can get as far as anger and then thoughts of revenge, but then I can't, I find it hard to go beyond that into better feelings. Well, you must, or you would have caused a lot of trouble that would have caused you a lot of trouble. In other words, that revenge is dissipating in some way. How is it dissipating? Guilt for having those vengeful thoughts. The story that we like to tell that makes it easiest to hear is Jerry and Esther were traveling from Phoenix to San Diego and about halfway was Yuma. But there wasn't anything they were interested in in Yuma. Not anything. <laughs> it's out in the middle of the desert and they didn't know of anything. Of course, there may have been matches that they didn't allow themselves to find. So when they got to Yuma, which was about halfway, they didn't freak out because they were disappointed that they weren't yet in Phoenix. And then in their freak out, get so confused that they turned around and went back to Phoenix. So it was Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma. Anger, revenge, anger, revenge, anger, revenge, anger, revenge, anger, revenge, anger, revenge, guilt, anger, revenge. Instead, their desire, all of the reasons that they wanted to feel good, all the things that they were going toward, were dominant enough that they were able to keep focused on what they wanted, which is a bit of what you were talking about at the very beginning. What's your question now? You said over the years, and so where are you right now? Let's talk about something that's happening now, and let's find some existing matches that get you to San Diego. The interpersonal relationships I've been thinking of the most recently is with my parents. Are they still around? Yes. They're still bugging you? <laughs> I'm 43 and not married, and I'm Indian, so yes. That's hard patterning to overcome, isn't it? In other words, that's a belief that is dug in. Mm -hmm. And so when you take your bag of marbles to the field, that's what you line up with. That's what you practice. We're not going to spend too much time on that because any time we spend there just practices that more. So let's do that existing match thing that we were talking about. The subject that we're talking about that is uncomfortable within you is the subject of your parents philosophy or opinion of you yeah do they keep you in a box somewhere or not a literal box <laughs> I think they'd rather I was yes you feel bound by their expectations of you it's all right just use any words that feel sort of kind of like what it is it's not right. so much bound as hopeless Hopeless because, is there any Kleenex around here? It's all right, he can just use his sleeve. Um. Or Esther's. That's what she uses. That's what she uses. It's more of a, the standards for that box are physically impossible to reach. I'd have to go back in time or be someone else. Well, the thing is, they're not the law of attraction. They're not even the stage manager. <laughs> but they don't know that. So that's why they behave the way they do. But as long as you know that, you just have to know that. They can't attract for you. But if 
you calibrate to them and don't feel bad about it most people do especially when something's that strong when you calibrate to something like that then what happens is the law of attraction just keeps bringing you more and more of it and that's why it feels futile it feels impossible to do anything else about but as you hear us talking about the laws of the universe and you begin applying what you know in other areas that aren't about them in other words when we said earlier look for existing matches we would not encourage you to try to find existing good feeling matches about your parents because it's unlikely that you'll do that because you know why and it's okay the law of attraction is not giving you any of that stuff yet because what you've got going about them it is trending in such a strong way that it's logical that those are the thoughts that would keep coming so you have to show yourself off the subject of that how responsive the universe is how responsive the law of attraction is to what you deliberately offer give us if you can briefly give us an example of something that they want from you that is upsetting to you or do you want the same thing they're just amplifying that you want it and they want it and you just haven't done it yet and so they're disappointed and then you're disappointed because they're disappointed is it like that or are they really wanting stupid things more the latter so what do they want just give us a suggestion they want to feel peace about my life they want to feel peace about your life and so they've got to calibrate to their inner being do they ever no do they ever dance no do they ever sing no do they ever smile? <laughs> On occasion. Do they ever enjoy an animal, a beast? Do they enjoy a pet? They've recently started to, well, they've recently started to appreciate my sister's cat because they all moved in with them recently. That's a very recent thing. A cat, that's interesting because cats are so independent. How did they get that cat to live the way they need the cat to live? Or are they allowing about the cat? So they don't expect as much of the cat as they do of you. That's insulting. Yeah. Well, there, there was a time when, there was a time when Albatross, the cat, jumped onto their Albatross? Sidebar. Yes. We thought that would be your name. Um, I'm Siva. Uh, the albatross, uh, the cat, jumped onto the sideboard with lots of expensive plates, and my dad started yelling at the cat and said, he knows he shouldn't go up there. And I said, well, Daddy's a cat. How does he know not to go up there? Um, but they've become more allowing to accept the cat's behavior. Why? Because the cat doesn't yield to their demand. Because they want to love the cat. They want to love the cat. They want to love you, too. They will yield to your alignment, not demands. The cat is not demanding. The cat's just being the natural cat. As you more and more allow yourself to be the natural you, it's our promise to you that their desire to love you will win out. The discord that you're feeling is not about your fight. It's not the right word. Fight with your parents. It's about your fight with yourself. You feel this way because your inner being so appreciates your parents and understands why they're like that and understands how it's been for them and understands, understands. And your inner being just knows so many existing matches about your parents. But we're not going to try to drag you through that because the law of attraction won't yield those to you easily. So we already found some existing matches about your parents and about the cat. So let's find some other existing matches. In other words, are there aspects in your life where you see matches that bring you joy? Easy matches, easy existing matches. Some things in your day-to-day -day experience that are easy for you. Easy existing matches. To feel joy. Yeah. My walk to work, take the boat to Say work. Say more. Um, I live near Tower Bridge, which yes. most people think is London Bridge, but it's not. Yes. And it's this beautiful... 100 year old Victorian structure and Can it's a beautiful clearly? thing they want to hear you. oh ah. how about now okay so I go to work by boat 
I live in London by the Thames. Is that um, awesome? It's amazing. And That's an existing match. Yeah. You're not encouraging the problem with your parents when you're on that match. Can't happen. Your bag of marbles is lighted up differently. What else? Then you walk where? On the Tower Bridge? I, I walk past Tower Bridge. Past it? Um, I'm often listening to you on YouTube, by the yeah. way. Yeah, that's good. And um, I take the boat to work. Yeah. And that's a really nice way to get to work. Yes. No traffic. Yes. Fresh air. Yes. And I get to my office and it's yeah. a beautiful... Existing match, existing match, existing match, existing match, existing match. And you know, you're offering a vibration and your bag of marbles is responding to that dominant vibration. So by looking for that existing match, you're rendering that thing that's so easy to match up to that isn't a match to your inner being. You're rendering that inactive for now. And the more you render that inactive, the more it fades in the bag until it becomes non-existent. Until when you take that bag of marbles that is you, we know, we know. It's a dumb analogy, but go with it. When you take that bag of marbles that is you into the atmosphere where your parents are, and all that's dissipated, all that guilt and concern is dissipated. You're just this bright, beautiful, harmonic, connected being that your inner being and their inner being knows you to be. They will recognize that. They'll recognize that. You won't have those conversations. Really. Are you sure? Well, we can't be your point of attraction. We can stand with your inner being and be your advocate. And we can call you to all of this. But we can't practice the vibration for you. And we can't stop pushing against for you. We can inspire existing matches and do often. And we revel in every one that you come into alignment with in other words so much of your inspiration is your harmony with your inner being so much of it is and really we don't see wait we're looking and we're not kidding as we look through the vibration that is your parents oh they're well matched they are a vibrational match do you know that soulmate kind of thing you didn't know that they are Sometimes those that are antagonistic to one another have come with really strong reasons. They've come with really strong reasons. Anyway, that's sort of off into the weeds a little bit, but we thought you'd find it interesting. <laughs> when your inner being sees them, they are not as resistant about you as your version of them. Because you keep dragging the past forward and they're living much more of their now than you know. That's so annoying to children to realize that their parents just aren't thinking about you as much as they once did. <laughs> They're sort of on with their life. Oh, they'll tell you they are and they'll sing the same old song, but you know why? You know why the conversation keeps being so much the same? Your bag of marbles, your bag of marbles, your expectation has everything to do with what comes to you. Even from these long relationships that have been relationships since the day you were born into this body. Even those kinds of long relationships. Don't you like knowing that? Don't you feel freer just having this conversation? And now let's look for some existing matches with your parents. Let's just give it a go. See if you can. Oh, they gave you an avenue into this life experience. Woo! They did. Here you are. Kept you alive for a quite a long time they have they try to stay true to who they are they try to stay true to who they are they try to stay true to what they believe is the right thing to do and they have never one time ever asked something of you or told you to do something that they didn't believe would be good for you even though they're not the stage manager <laughs> but they meant well they meant well true Thank you. Good enough? If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next